And here's more of what President Biden had to say yesterday in Tel Aviv, something that had echoes of a message from Holocaust survivor, the late Nobel laureate Elie Wiesel. October 7th, which was sacred, a sacred Jewish holiday, became the deadliest day for the Jewish people since the Holocaust. The world watched then. It knew. And the world did nothing. We will not stand by and do nothing again. Not today, not tomorrow, not ever. Wherever and whenever a project even similar or close to similar to that project that Hitler had for the Jews and some other people, we must immediately do whatever we can to stop it, to denounce it first, to disarm the perpetrators to be, and to create a world in which their project could not come to fruition. That is Elie Wiesel. A decade ago, he dedicated his life to making sure never again truly meant never again. Joining us now is his son, Alicia Wiesel. He's chairman of the Elie Wiesel Foundation. Also with us, Israel's special envoy for combating anti-terrorism, Mikhail kotler Wunsch. Thank you both for being here. We really appreciate it. Um, Alicia, I want to begin with you because we just heard the, the words of your father. Um, and speak, if you would, to the significance of the president going to Tel Aviv yesterday, to physically being there in addition to the week and a half or nearly two weeks now of unequivocal American support for Israel here. Of course, and thank you so much for having us on the show. Um, when my father passed in 2016, then Vice President Biden put out a statement, and the statement said, there is a promise that needs to be made to remember what his friend and teacher, Elie Wiesel, had said, never again, and that it was a promise that should be deep in the hearts of good people everywhere. And you have to realize tens of thousands of school children in this country are reading night, and it is coming to life before their very eyes. And there are going to be evil people that are not only committing the deeds, the Hamas terrorists took selfies and videos. You have the leaders of Hamas coming on Russian TV declaring why they did it. You have the indifferent. You have school administrations on universities twisting themselves to avoid condemning the evil of Hamas, trying to both sides this issue and establish moral equivalence between Israel and Hamas. And then you also have heroes. You have unbelievable moral courage exhibited by President Biden. It is clear that when President Biden made that promise in his statement, as my father departed the world, it is a promise that he intends on keeping. And you think about the incredible moral courage that it takes. The Holocaust did not happen in a vacuum. The Holocaust is the, the, the culmination of over a thousand years of blood libel against the Jews. You think about the poisoned well claims. You think about Christian babies that the pogroms would trot out and say, the Jews did this, we have to go kill them. What do you think is happening now? Look at the reaction that happened when Israel was falsely accused of bombing a hospital. It's very easy to say never again, but to face up to the angry mob and say no, you're incorrect. I hate to tell you, it was the other team. That is unbelievable moral courage. So my big hope, if you, if you think about the world that these students who are all reading night right now, as they watch congressmen like Rashida Tlaib spout the blood libel, refuse to take it back, the danger that that puts Jewish people in across the world, here in the United States and in Israel, and then you think about the unbelievable moral clarity that President Biden has had, there are unbelievable examples for our students to learn from right now. And in fact, she doubled down on that claim at a rally later in the day <clears throat> yesterday. Uh, Mikhail, from where you're sitting, from Israel's point of view, I was watching you listen to the interview. Joe and Mika just had the extraordinary interview there with Ellie Beer and the emotion is raw and the world feels your anguish and your pain but we can never understand it from the perspective that you have what can you say to an american audience about how israelis are feeling right now well it's actually why i got on a plane as israel's special envoy for combating anti-semitism that has my own three children in the army as we speak and i want to share with you that the entire israeli society is deployed to this war whether on the home front command as ellie beer just reported there is a war or on the front fighting what is continues to be this onslaught, this war that began on October 7th. Something very, very important, and Alicia Wiesel was not only a friend and a dear beloved member of our own family in many, many ways, but that never again understanding, 
never again is now, never again understands that the very same anti-Semitism that fueled the massacre of October 7th, the covenant of Hamas, which like Mein Kampf, calls for the annihilation of the state of Israel and the murder of Jews, that very same assault was enabled by anti-Semitism, but it also is the same anti-Semitism that enables those that deny or excuse or justify the atrocities, the war crimes, the crimes against humanity that we saw right here in protests in New York, in protests all over the world, on campuses, on social media. And so we have to be very clear, there would be no one that would call for a ceasefire with Nazis. There would be no one that would spout or peddle the information given to them by Nazis as fact-checked information apropos the hospital and what happened the other day. There would be nobody that would say, I am a Nazi in protests in New York City hold up, holding up signs. Anybody who holds up those signs that say, I am Hamas, is holding up a sign saying, I am ISIS just like September 11th was the day that we will never forget right here in this city. And just like nobody would hold up a sign saying, I am a Nazi. And that moral clarity and courage that has to be not only by the President of the United States, by, by, but by every single individual that recognizes that this is an assault and our shared humanity. It is war on our civilization. It may be the Jew or the Jewish nation state that is now on the front, but we are all on the front lines. And that is why I got on this plane to make that urgent call and to make this as relevant as possible to those that think that the world maybe will go back to what it was before October 7th, but it can't for never again again to mean anything. Alicia, a moment ago, we were discussing everything that's been going on in this country. And as you put it, the masks have come off. So many people, people who may have cloaked their anti-Semitism in different ways now are just outright putting it on full display. Members of Congress, uh, campus groups. If you go outside synagogues in New York City right now, you have New York City police officers in tactical gear because they need to be. And there are protests of Israel who were just the victims of a horrible terrorist attack. So how do you make sense of that and how do you fight that? Look, we have a very deep corruption, unfortunately, in our universities in this country. You know, for a long time, people have wondered, what is it that's ultimately blocking peace in the Middle East? And one of the things that we know is that there is still hate being taught in Palestinian textbooks. You have a generation that is being raised on hate. But the sad truth is it's not just there, it's happening here. You have professors such as at Cornell and Columbia, Yale University. You have, you have student bodies that are, you, know, you, have, you have professors that are, that are celebrating this, saying it was an extraordinary day. It was awesome. It was exhilarating. You have student bodies like at Harvard, where 30 to 40 student groups, you know, were very determined to only blame Israel for what's going on. And the thought that this is happening after you know, so many years of social justice movements awakening in this country, where the very same Jewish people that marched for Black Lives Matter are now opening their eyes and they're like, how is it possible that these people who we stood with are blaming the victim? Blaming the victim is the one big thing that you are not supposed to do. And here we are in that state. This is gonna have to be a wake up call. And significant donors are reevaluating their relationships to these universities because they want to know what happened here and why is my money supporting hatred against the Jewish people. So, Mikhail, long before October 7th, there was already in recent years a rise in hate crimes, a rise in anti-Semitism here in the United States, also in Europe, throughout the globe. What is your level of concern that that hatred could only increase as the situation in the Middle East deteriorates and the war gets even hotter? So it not only can increase, it is increasing. We see Jews targeted in their homes. We see Jewish homes in Berlin being marked with uh, stars of David. We see protests that actually, in fact, call for these violence. If they cannot condemn it, then they endorse it against Jews right here in New York City. And I want to say, continuing what Alicia just said, there is a definition of anti-Semitism. It's the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition. It is critical that we recognize and hold to account and understand that the modern strain of anti-Semitism, an ever mutating virus that enabled the atrocities of the Holocaust and of October 7th, anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. There is no ifs, buts, or so's. All of those institutions, all of those law enforcement mechanisms, all of those 
um, um, capable of understanding, universities have to be able to not just say we are committed to combat anti-Semitism, because you can't combat something without first defining it. Anti-Semitism, an ever-mutating virus, has enabled this modern mainstream form, that the form of anti-Zionism, to enable not only the savage attacks, but their legitimization on our campuses, online, and in all kinds of spaces. So there is what to do, but it's a call to action. It no longer is enough to say we are committed to combating. You cannot identify or combat anything without first defining it. And when Alicia says the masks are off, the masks are off in every realm for all of us. It is clear that anti-Zionism and the lack of acceptance of Israel's right to exist in any borders is the modern mainstream form of anti-Semitism that we have to identify and combat together. And as you say, it's right. We don't have to wonder what Hamas's goal is. It's right in the charter. They put it in writing, the elimination of the state of Israel.